Uh, you learn he paid cash. Uh, you learn he didn't have a credit card. You learn he didn't put any baggage on the airplane. Uh, you learn the UK had denied him a visa. Uh, you learn the NSA had had some intercepts. On and on. Every one of those things uh, raises a flag. Now, there's Lee Hamilton, former Democratic congressman, and as you saw, the vice chairman of the 9-11 Commission, uh, talking about the terror, attempted terror attack on Christmas Day. Let's bring in our panel, Jeff Birnbaum, managing editor, digital of The Washington Times, Mort Kondracki, executive editor of Roll Call, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Um, now, what you heard here uh, is him talking about all of the, the red flags that one might have thought would have been flying clearly for everyone who was involved in this. Uh, presumably, this is exactly what President Obama is hearing uh, from his intelligence officials and Homeland Security officials. Um, you know, it used to be, Charles, that if you went up to an airline overseas flying to the U.S. and paid in cash and didn't check baggage, that you were automatically thrown into a bureaucratic labyrinth uh, that would take hours to, to emerge from. What happened? you'd get tackled by a, really a burly guy. <laughs> and in fact, you know, one of the scandals here is Amsterdam has the, the, high, the, the largest number of these uh, super scanners, but Americans up until today, I think it changed, the ruling had changed today, until uh, at the time of the, of the attempt in, on, on Christmas Day, Americans were, were not subject. Anybody headed into America wasn't subject. Look, I think this review is going to look at, obviously, the dots unconnected, but that's relatively easy to correct. For example, the list of half a million people who've had some, even a tenuous association with uh, terrorism, the Tide list, it's very easy. Uh, you start, you match the names on the Tide list with people who get visas. You could even do, ma match it with uh, driver's licenses, accident reports, arrest in the United States if you want to locate any of these in the U.S. To me, the scandal is what happened after this guy w was apprehended. He, he got stuck, he got sent to a, a civilian jail, lawyered up, and he's not speaking. He's the guy who allegedly had said immediately after he was apprehended that uh, there are others like him in Yemen who are uh, training. He's got information on all this. Instead of treating him as an enemy a combatant, we have a mania, uh, this administration, of treating uh, people like him as a cr criminal, and we lose all access to any information which would save American lives. Now, Jeff, I know you want to get in on this. Before you do, I want to, uh, want to listen to something from a former uh, FBI official who dealt with these issues, especially on the visa question. Why we would ever uh, allow a person with this kind of a background to have a visa to enter the United States? I mean, people are not born with some inalienable right uh, to be a guest of the United States. I think uh, one judgment I'm willing to make now is there was enough out there in the system that I think uh, forget about the no-fly list. Why we would want a person with this kind of, uh, of of a background to be our guest in this country with a visa? Now, Jeff, one of the things that the State Department is talking about doing, apparently planning to do, is to take this bigger list that Charles was talking about, the Tide list, the 500,000-plus names list, which is hard to pull for no-fly and that sort of thing, but not at all hard, it would seem, to cross-check with visas, and that's what State Department is now talking about doing, but that seems like a fairly easy thing to do, and it's mystifying why it wasn't done before. Uh, because it seems like an easy thing to do doesn't mean that it actually is an easy thing to do. And uh, this is what we're learning about in bureaucracies, generally speaking. The efforts to try to integrate health care records, for example, supposed to be an easy thing. It's taken years and hundreds of millions of dollars and still hasn't happened. I think actually connecting the stovepipes that uh, make up these bureaucracies has turned out to be uh, almost the Gordian knot of the federal government. And now there will be more money put into solving this problem, but it's quite difficult to solve the problem. In fact, the putting together of the Homeland Security Department at the beginning of the Bush administration has turned out to be a perfect example of perception over substance. Putting all of these groups together was a very good public relations effort, but they didn't actually connect in a way that their computers talked to each other and allowed the gap that created the big problem on Christmas Day. Yeah, you know, Lee Hamilton uh, said that there, were, there are still four or five different watch lists. 
And to get all of those watch lists together or to get one watch list, I mean, I said last night something about Jack Bauer, you know, in, 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 in 24, they just go click, 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 <laughs> everything, you know, magically. Magic right, and he jumps but, off now, the roof look, and it's all done, look, right? Look, yeah. if, if, if bank teller machines can process billions of checks a, a, a day, why can't these people talk to one another el electronically? I think it's largely because of this bureaucratic problem. I mean, it is, the, 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 as everybody knows who's ever read The Looming Tower, Lawrence Wright's book, the, the CIA knew that the bombers, the 9-11 the, the, uh, 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 hijackers were in the United States and never told the FBI. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, you've got, you've got the, here in the, uh, in the Fort Hood case, you've got the Army and the, and the National uh, Counterterrorism Center and the, uh, and the NSA not, not communicating. Here you've got other agencies not communicating. It, it, this, this, it, is, it is Obama's responsibility to get this thing fixed. Well, on that very point, I want you to listen to something else Lee Hamilton said, a former Democratic congressman uh, who raises this point about this issue. Let's listen. It is a question in the end of political leadership. Now, uh, in Washington, as all of us know, you have a very long list of priorities, and everybody has a list of his own priorities, and the priorities shift around from week to week, if not day to day. Uh, that seems to be an indictment. Uh, I've got about 15 seconds. Who, what do you make well, of it? The president has given 29 speeches on health care. I don't I think he's given a single speech on terrorism. He will now, I think, in the future. Quickly and, and, he, and he treats people like this as defendants who don't have to speak and give information. That's also a mistake. It's the wrong message. I think it is worth having a debate about what to do about these guys and whether there shouldn't be some sort of national security court into which, into which they're sent. Okay. Another jobless report is released today, and while some hopes were raised,